Hey guys, how's it going? Powin here. Welcome back to the channel. It's awesome to have you guys here for another DIY technical video by Acuity Instruments. Now in today's video, we're going to be installing our performance radiator hoses into this 10th gen Civic Type R right next to me. This video is made to supplement our online PDF install guide, so don't forget to check those out on our website if you want the most detail for this installation. Now depending on your level of expertise, this entire installation should take you about one and a half to two and a half hours. Before we begin this installation, let me go over the parts that are going to be coming in this radiator hose kit, as well as the tools you're going to need to complete this install. Now in the box you should find two Acuity silicone radiator hoses and four 30 to 45 millimeter hose clamps. For this installation, you're going to need a set of service ramps or a car jack with jack stands, a drain pan and a large bucket, Phillips and flathead screwdrivers, a ratchet wrench and socket extensions, a 10 mm hex socket, plastic pry tools, a metal pick tool, pliers, paper towels, and extra coolant. And because we're going to be refilling coolant back into the radiator, we recommend using a vacuum pressure fluid filler tool with an air compressor, or alternatively a plastic funnel kit. To begin, raise up and safely support the front of the car with either service ramps or a pump jack with jack stands. Pop open the hood and support it in place. Then locate the vehicle's battery in the engine bay. Loosen the nut on the negative terminal clamp as shown, then pull the terminal clamp off from the negative battery post and set it aside so it cannot make contact with the battery. Underneath the front of your vehicle, remove the engine undercover plate. There are two Phillips screws and six flathead screws that secure the undercover plate underneath the car. With the mounting screws removed, slide the undercover plate off as shown and then set it aside. Now place a drain pan directly underneath the radiator drain plug. The drain plug is located at the bottom of the radiator as shown. Loosen the drain plug until coolant starts flowing out of the drain tube and into your drain pan. As coolant drains from the radiator, Remove the expansion tank cap by turning it counterclockwise. By removing this cap, coolant will begin to drain out of the radiator faster. Once all the coolant drains out, tighten back down the radiator drain plug and reinstall the expansion tank cap. With coolant drained from the radiator, the airbox assembly must be removed to gain optimal access around the radiator hoses. First, locate the MAF sensor on the airbox. Then depress the locking tab on the wiring connector to pull it off from the MAF sensor. To remove the rest of the wiring harness, pry inward on the two following tabs to slide the wiring harness off of its respective mounting points and set this wiring harness aside. Next, unclip the bulb seal from the bulkhead cover as shown. There are five orange clips and a single rubber plug that hold the bulb seal into the bulkhead cover. Then remove the two screws that secure the rubber intake plenum into the bulkhead cover. Now loosen the hose clamp on the rubber airflow tube that is next to the airbox. Then pull it free from the rest of the intake system. The part of the wiring harness for the battery is clipped into the top cover of the airbox. Use a pick tool to depress the two locking tabs on this clip to remove it from the airbox. You can see how the two tabs were depressed here. Next, we must loosen two screws that affix the airbox to the chassis of the car as shown. Once the screws are loosened, firmly grab the airbox assembly and pull straight upward. There is a rubber grommet on the bottom of the airbox assembly that needs to slide off of a metal pin on the chassis shown here. For more working space around the radiator hoses, the following airflow joint can also be removed by first loosening the hose clamp next to it. 
pull the joint free from an adjacent airflow tube to set it on top of the engine cover as shown. The next part to remove is the bulkhead cover, which is secured onto the chassis by plastic push clips. Now each clip can be removed by hand after prying out the center pin as shown. Once all of the plastic clips are pulled out, lift the bulkhead cover off of the chassis and then set it aside. With the bulkhead cover removed, we can now remove the OEM radiator hoses. Each hose is connected to the engine and the radiator with spring band hose clamps as shown. Now starting with the topmost OEM radiator hose, expand each hose clamp in order to slide it away from each end of the hose as shown. Now pull each end of the hose off from the radiator and the engine. Place paper towels under the hose to catch any coolant that may be left in the cooling system. Repeat this disassembly to remove the hose clamps on the lower radiator hose as shown. Then pull the radiator hose off from the engine and the radiator, placing paper towels underneath the hose to catch any remaining coolant. Now take the Acuity radiator hoses and loosely install the supplied hose clamps onto each end of both hoses. Now take note of each printed logo on both hoses. As a reference, the logos are printed on the top end of each hose. Take the longer of the two hoses and connect the bottom of the hose to the bottom hose barb on the radiator. Then install the top end of this hose onto the topmost hose barb on the engine. Then readjust the hose clamps as shown. Now take the smaller of the two hoses and install the top end with the Acuity logo on it onto the topmost hose barb on the radiator. Then install the other end of the hose onto the lower hose barb on the engine, and readjust the hose clamps as needed. Now take the time to adjust the alignment of the hoses so they don't make contact with each other. Now once you are satisfied with the alignment of both hoses, tighten down the hose clamps by hand. If clearances are too tight for a screwdriver, you can also use a hex socket and ratchet wrench. The cooling system can now be refilled with new coolant. We recommend using a vacuum pressure refilling tool as the most efficient and reliable method to add coolant back into the cooling system. If you don't have access to a tool like this, skip this step and proceed to step 9. Shown here is the main refiller assembly of our toolkit. It features a vacuum pressure gauge on top, with a rubber neck on the bottom that can be adapted to fit a variety of expansion tanks and radiators. There are two valves on the assembly, the first being the intermediate valve, and the other being the coolant fill valve. In addition to that, this kit also contains a coolant pickup tube, as well as a venturi valve mechanism that connects to the intermediate valve so it can convert shop air into vacuum pressure. To begin the refilling process, select an adapter that fits snug into the spout of the expansion tank. Then proceed to mount the refiller tool with the adapter onto the expansion tank. The refiller tool used here has a tightening knob that expands the bottom neck of the tool with the adapter to provide a tight seal with the inner walls of the spout of the expansion tank. To prevent any air leaks during the refilling process, clamp down the rubber overflow tube as shown. Hook up the venturi valve to the refiller tool, then close off all the air and fluid valves. With the valves closed, hook up a shop air line to the venturi valve. Open the venturi valve and then open the intermediate valve on the refiller tool. Doing so starts the process of removing air from the cooling system through the expansion tank. As vacuum pressure increases, it is normal for the radiator hoses to deflate.
Once the system reaches about 25 psi of vacuum pressure, close the intermediate valve, then close the venturi valve. Observe the pressure gauge for a few minutes. If any pressure drops, inspect the refiller tool and any hose connections for leaks before moving on to the next step. Now fill a clean bucket with about two gallons of new coolant. Then put the filter end of the coolant fill tube into the bucket of coolant. Now open the coolant valve under tool assembly so that vacuum pressure pulls coolant from the bucket to fill the cooling system. As vacuum pressure falls back down to zero PSI, the radiator hoses will expand as coolant flows back into the system. When the gauge reaches about zero PSI or if coolant stops flowing, the system has been refilled. Now remove the entire refiller tool assembly from your vehicle. Then clean up any spilled coolant, reinstall the expansion tank cap, and unclamp the overflow tube. Reinstall the stock components following steps 2 to 6 in reverse order. At this point, if you had skipped step 8 and still need to refill coolant, proceed to step 10. If you have completed step 8, you can now start up the car to check for any additional coolant leaks. Complete a few heating cycles under non-spirited driving conditions to let the cooling system purge any remaining air bubbles. Then check the fluid levels in the expansion tank, adding any coolant if necessary. If you don't have access to a vacuum pressure refiller tool, you can also use a spill-free funnel kit like this one to refill and bleed coolant into your cooling system through the expansion tank. Most kits come with various fittings and universal caps to fit a plastic funnel to the expansion tank or radiator. To begin this method, select an adapter and cap combination that provides the best seal on the spout of the expansion tank. Then insert the plastic funnel into the adapter as shown. To prevent any additional leaks during this process, clamp down the overflow tube. Now fill coolant into the cooling system until the funnel is partially filled with coolant. And loosely cover the top of the funnel to prevent any coolant from splashing out. Then start the car to let the engine warm up to normal operating temperature, leaving the air conditioning system off. As soon as the engine starts running, air bubbles will start to enter the funnel. Add coolant as necessary to keep the funnel partially filled with coolant as it drains into the expansion tank during this process. Wait for the radiator fans to kick on at least twice as it is a useful indicator that coolant has been well circulated through the cooling system. Once no more air bubbles enter the funnel, turn off the car and check the cooling system for any leaks. And proceed to plug the bottom of the funnel, then remove the funnel assembly from the car and clean up any spilled coolant. Add or remove coolant as needed so that the fluid level in the expansion tank is within the minimum and maximum levels as indicated on the side of the expansion tank. Reinstall the expansion tank cap and then unclamp the overflow tube. Make sure to complete a few heating cycles under non-spirited driving conditions to let the cooling system purge any remaining air in the system. Then finally check the fluid levels once again in the expansion tank, adding coolant if necessary. All right, everyone, that wraps it up for today's install video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, if you did, please don't forget to leave a like below on this video and also consider subscribing to the channel for more content. In addition to that, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram as well to stay even more up to date on all of our current projects and parts. So with that being said, guys, my name is Pound Song, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.